we had to get it out of this experimental mode. And, and I guess the first stage for that was to really establish and found the ISO standard for blockchain. So this is TC307. So I did that in 2015. Mm. And the idea behind that was to create a way where we can have uh, you know, a mass collaboration to work on the technology at an international level. And, and that's what's happened. So now we've got 53 countries working together to standardize blockchain um, across the world. And that includes organizations, startups, government, enterprise, academia, everyone. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so, so we set out to, to then you know, bring it up into the mainstream by standardizing the technology, we then built the platform. And so working on the ISO standards, we then built Overledger following that. Um, and the whole idea is, is to, to bring the mass adoption of blockchain That video of Gilbert Verdin always gives me goosebumps. The foresight, the vision, everything. Definitely a genius right there. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Please remember, I'm not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice and none of the information provided in this video should ever be a signal to buy or to sell. Please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell. Please comment so that we can get this video out as far and as wide as possible. But we look at the crypto bubbles and we see green everywhere. Quant is up five ranks to 71 with a market cap of $1.72 billion with a 24 hour volume of $108 million. That is a huge rise from where we were. Current price 143. We're going to talk about that in a moment. We're down 0.4% in the hour. We're up nearly 16% in the day and up 14.5% in the week and up nearly 40% in the month, which is absolutely awesome. But we go to our TA before we get started, because it's going to be a banger. We look at bull shark trading, trading to break from this high volume node. Buy side liquidity around $153 to $154 may give us a slight pullback. The fuse has been lit and he's absolutely right. As we can see here, this is what we need to break. And then we head up towards these buy side liquidity. And I think we are getting our way towards that disbelief phase. So the accumulation phase hopefully will be done soon. That next leg up from here. And we move over to CryptoQuant where we can see the exchange reserves. And this is all the exchange reserves, including the derivatives, including the spot on exchanges. But we look at it all. It's currently at 1.519 million. But if we look at the spot exchanges, it's going down. Literally, it's going down. We are heading towards a scarcity. It is dropping. It's down to 237. I think that's the lowest I've actually seen it. So I say this today, but this was actually yesterday. Today has seen some huge transactions. Charts are looking ready to burst. Spot exchange reserves, as we've seen, are decreasing. Big wallets accumulating, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And the narrative for 2024 is looking spicy with everything. The possibilities. We've got SATP, RLN. We've got CBDCs. We've also got other things in the future like gateway staking still yet to come. I mean, this is all absolutely phenomenal news. And we've got many, many more things. Hopefully this news will start to come out over the next coming months. So then we see this. This is a new wallet that I found yesterday and they've made a text of 4,410 quant from CB10. Is this another licensed lockup wallet? We'll find out over the next month or so. That was a 554,000, over a half a million dollars in just one hit and they aren't messing about. So then we also see Again, this morning, this same wallet that I was just talking about just then just added a further 1,957 quant. That was a value of 268,000. That's a total of 6,358 quant within 24 hours. That's $822,000 literally within the last 24 hours. And I say that is cooking with gas. Now we see this from San. So just a shout out to San and Tokenizer here. Um, they've been phenomenal all the way through this bear market and have helped me tremendously with their alpha and obviously allowed me to devise my own research around some of what they've been offering up on crypto Twitter or crypto X, whatever you want to call it. And San says here, all these new CBDC papers are now reference Rosalind quant at core. Now I've said this all along, the UK is at the center of the world's financial exports. We need to bear that in mind. Everybody will be looking towards what the UK are doing when it comes to technology, 
fintech, everything, because we are the world's leading exporter of this financial technology. He says here, quant at the core as their inspiration or use the same type of infrastructure. Bag the central banks, bag the world. 95% of the world's Web3 use cases will use risk-free CBDCs. And he says, all the money meme is becoming more suitable for quant than XRP. Now we look at what he's replying to for tokenizer here, there's now six CBDC frameworks by the BIS inspired by Quant, Overledger, SATP, Rosalind, Bank of England, Unified Ledger, the BIS, Seller, Hong Kong and Israel, EKR, W, Bank of Korea, Etenge, Bank of Kazakhstan, Eshekel, Bank of Israel. All these share one thing in common, they all utilize API architecture model for their multi-layered CBDC platforms. This was first proved feasible at full scale with Project Rosalind where they used Quant's overledger to enable the API calling across platforms. Shortly after the BIS had concluded the unified ledger framework which connects tokenized money and assets onto a single shared ledger. Once again, the connectivity is done through API communication and shown in the graph below, which we're gonna look at. Next, we saw the first ever CBDC project creation inspired off a former CBDC. This, of course, is Project Seller, which takes much inspiration from Project Rosalind and would set precedent for CBDC adoption of the framework Rosalind showed. Then with time, we saw this progressively scale as we now see the central banks of Korea, Israel, Kazakhstan, all adopting this framework in their own respective CBDC architecture. There is next to nothing in crypto of this scale. Very few can hold a candle against the level of utility and adoption that Quant has brought to the world of enterprise and standardization. And we saw that at the start with Gilbert talking there. Again, that brings me goosebumps. We are watching the transition of money flow into blockchain, all thanks to Overledger. These aren't just random showcases of Overledger, SATP, but rather these are some of the biggest players in finance, being central banks showing that they are going to be using the exact framework and standards set by Quant. It's not just CBDCs either, but the unified ledger has been a model that's been gaining some traction since its launch in June 2023. This model ensures of interoperability across different financial systems and platforms. The fact it was released just two weeks after Rosalind shares distinct features such as API layers for communications says all you need to know. Project Rosalind opened the door to what we see now as the next evolution of CBDC architecture. And we can see it all here, the API gateway in Etenj. We've got it here with Seller. We've got the Rosalind project that set it all off. We've got the eShekel, which is the API layer here. We've got the E1, which is the Bank of Korea plans to create a unified ledger for tokenized asset settlement. So this is absolutely massive. I am so, so excited because I've been doing videos on this for well over a year and been in quant for way longer than that. And I've seen research, done my own research and tried to provide you with information with regards to quant since then. And then we see this from Construction Trader ETH. Overledger isn't just a short-term game changer that will come and go like MySpace was. Overledger is a technology that will be around for decades and will be used by the whole of finance. Remember, billions of digital pounds will be transacting seamlessly daily worldwide via quant. So let's have a listen to this. <laughs> Let me go to APIs, and um, I would say that although on the time we go live in 2024, I don't think the API will be a game changer for the system. I think it has the real potential long term to be a game changer because I think it taps into this point that says data is, you know, data is the thing that's really underused and neglected in payments. It's this incredible data set of everything, every economic transaction that happens in sterling. Uh, you know, is flowing through the payment systems in the UK and ultimately RTGS, but that data is not currently easy to retrieve or, or use. Now, we've been making this big investment in structuring the data better and making it richer, but then I think the API layer is the way that you get it so that the data flows in and out between ourselves and our participants in this seamless, you know, demand-driven way. And so I think long-term, being able to get into this virtuous development cycle, as you've seen happen in other markets, you know, outside finance, but in other areas where APIs drive this 
you know, much better consumer experience, get much better data out to you. And then that builds upon itself and you get this virtuous cycle. Um, I think that API technology that we're building in and will be a slow burn over time, but allied with the ISO, of the richer and better structured data, I think that's the thing I can really see being transformational over the sort of 10, 15 year time horizon. Wow. And it starts here, the API layer. He said it all just there. And then we see this from Free Antons. So a big shout out to Free Antons here. If you're new to Quant, here's all you need to know. By the way, Quant is my largest altcoin position and Quant has been one of the top crypto performance throughout the entire bear market. Quant Network has sold its tech over ledger to the largest organization of the world, the Bank of International Settlements. Quant is a scarce coin, as we've just talked about, with a low price. Supply on exchanges are at its lowest rate ever due to investors, whales, and people have been gobbling up the supply. Quant has a $2 billion market cap, yet a $1 million market order will raise the price by $20 on any exchange. Quant hodlers are not going to sell you cheap Quant. Absolutely. So there you go, guys. I'll leave you with that. I am very, very happy with some of this price action that we're seeing that I've been talking about for so, so long. And it's just nice to see it get over that ledge and then move. We've got a little way to go yet, but I'm hopeful. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice. Please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any further videos. All the best and I'll catch you later.